Hello again, lovely people. So this is just another update on the remote, and at the same time, a qu couple of quick thank yous, actually. A few of you have been contributing, making donations to Nova, which helps pay for all this plastic, guys. I won't even show you the boxes full of parts that I have. Uh, it, it's so great to be appreciated in what I'm doing here and sharing with you. So many, many thanks to all of you. Um, a few honorable mentions. Steffi has been a huge help in Discord, especially managing conversations and the project while I kind of stepped away for a week or two. Uh, and huge thanks to my new friend Jordan, who has been working with me to um, assemble all of the 3D prints, the STL files, into a wonderful assembly view, exploded view, that you all are going to be able to click on and see exactly how things are put together. And I'm going to leave it right there because I'm going to show you a preview right after we talk about the remote. So stick around for a few minutes to check that out. I think you'll all be so amazed. And please give your thanks to Jordan because he put some time into this and it, it, it's really super cool what he did. And side note, he's even taking the time to teach me a little about Fusion 360 so I can get the hell away from Tinkercad and stop spending days doing this kind of stuff. Okay, so in, in my previous video, or one of the previous videos on this, I talked about when it comes to prototyping. If you're trying to work on something to refine it, to get the whole screw holes, all that stuff aligned right, don't keep printing the whole piece. Cut out the piece that you're working on and just work on that. And then when you're happy, translate all that back to your main piece. So you can see here working on that joystick hole. Yeah, I went through several iterations, but these were my final where it was just tiny, tiny tweaks to positions. So yeah, one, two, and three nailed it. And that was done. So that's just a little tidbit of info. Um, I am still considering, I've been talking with our other friend, Mano, who built a remote and the shroud and this joystick thumbstick still bother me. I mean, the only way to use the factory one is to make a large asshole like that. And then a couple of guys have, you know, done these little bevels, um, pistachian plates or whatever you want to call it around it. And it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't excite me. I mean, I, I really don't see, I get it. That helps to hide the electronics a bit but you know what i may end up just sticking with our own printed ones and yes you can see the controller but whoop de doo guys let's let maybe i'll shoot out a vote on that and see what you guys think because honestly yes i'm getting tired of playing with plastic on this remote but let's take a look at what i've come up with because you've all seen this pretty much part of it um, I have moved things around a tiny bit and refined things and i think this is pretty much done but the part that I'm most happy about and proud of, and this goes thanks to Jordan again, he and I were talking about how I could do this kind of mounting all of these surface mountable um, components. So he was talking about a separate box that you attach them all to or plate or what have you, and then attach that to the Nana, I mean, to the remote. <laughs> But let me show you what I came up with. So this I was simulating as my front face here as I was trying to position things. Like I just talked about, I just cut out the piece that I'm working on rather than reprinting the remote every time. So that's what I did here. So I was using this to size and, and position my components. Uh, but then at the same time, it dawned on me, well, what if not only do I cut the holes, but I also put a little indentation of the footprint of the component. So it will pretty much pop right in there now obviously not enough to hold it from us playing with the controls we'd pop it right back out but these cutouts that i made fit pretty accurately and it's a great start which then led me to finish this off so let me show you i'm, I'm just have this not screwed together or anything like that so i just want to turn this over and carefully remove the back and show you what it's going to look like because guys i've already got the mega in here and I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to fit all this nicely so as you can see batteries in here already and before we go ahead these are the last components left that I have to install in here which is the NRF module which as we've talked about is gonna go into one of these empty cavities in the in the handles 
the 5 volt regulator and the 3 volt regulator both of which can probably sit right here but I think I want to keep all power components here so I may install them both in there or end it up in the other cavity and then these two switches this one I had an issue printing my front here I got a little elephant toe going on or elephant's foot whatever they call it in the 3d printing world and it crushed this corner so I couldn't install that switch and this one as anybody knows who've used these kind of switches are nightmares to get out once you put them in so I'm not gonna bother popping that one in but anyway check it out so let me zoom in here a little bit for you guys <clears throat> so here we are with the mega sitting on top of this plate that I came up with that bolts onto the same bolts as the joysticks so if I can, oh hell, you know what, let's pause this video. Okay, so I just wanted to remove the screws that were holding this in, rather than bore you guys. Uh, funny note though, really the ideal length would be 25 millimeters, and all I have is 20 and 30, so they both work, but the 20s you could barely get a nut on, and the 30s just protrude too much. But anyway, when I'm done, we'll spec out all that. So, that being said, come on and focus for me, camera. You can see the Mega is mounted to this plate here, which, like I explained, screws right into the same screws as the remote, I mean the thumbsticks. But then if we go ahead and pull this out, you can see what's going on here. So here the components, like I said, are embedded in their own little footprints, and most are in there pretty good. Like, I can't really pop those out too easy. Uh, the LED one is a little loose because it's not perfectly square, not squared edges, right? So anyhow, yes, it's pretty much that. So those fit in there great. And then I was realizing, heck, all I got to do is put a piece of plastic over each one of these, not near the pins, and we're done. So that's where I came up with this plate, which is basically the same as this piece that I just showed you. Ooh, my Mega was just taped on there, so... Uh, so it's basically that, and then I added... A thickness to it to make up for this thickness here and to sit right on top of the components. Now these two uh, OLEDs really go in deeper than the rest so what I'm thinking is we could probably just attach a piece of um, foam onto this part here and then put it in place and everything will be held nice and tight. The displays you shouldn't be pressing on anyway, same with the LEDs, but the, the slide potentiometers, the, they're, in, they're held in there the best because this block here hits them first. This section here and this section here. And I did put cutouts for the pins, but I've decided against using them. What I'm actually going to do is run the wires for all components out this end here so the wires come out the bottom. And then as I showed, the Mega fits here perfectly. My tape is not sticky anymore. And I'm going to put access to that port right there. And the wires will come up and we'll be able to solder them on. The only lame thing about this design is, yeah, we're not going to use JST connectors. We're not going to use pin headers. I'm most likely going to solder all connections. But the good thing is, everything lives in this front half of the remote with the exception of two buttons that are in the back piece, the NRF, and then the power components. The power components, I've already decided I'm just gonna do a couple of barrel connectors right here, which will be able to take the two halves apart. The NRF will have to figure out, and then those two switches will have to figure out. Could just be the same couple of barrel connectors so that if you do need to take things apart, it'll make life easier. So yeah, this plate I was really happy with when I finally did this print of it. And it will just go in like this and then it actually snaps in there pretty good and pretty tight almost doesn't even need to be screwed on but the way I designed it is it just shares these same two mounting holes I have to you can see I nipped this out manually so I still have a few adjustments to make I'll fix that in the design and like I said pop a hole here for the USB connector and yeah guys I mean, we even still have some room on this to mount. That's why I may put the regulators here. Or maybe even the NRF to save us from having to cable the two halves together. So, yeah. And look at that, too. It all fits in the, fr in the front half. So, yeah, we got pretty lucky. Of course, this is still going to have to be put on standoffs. So maybe we'll just put two screws in it. Forget the standoffs. 
since the Mega has these two massive mounting holes, that's probably what we'll end up doing. So I'm very, very happy with this so far. Um, I hate to put timelines on things, but I'd say less than a week and it should be ready to print, ready for y'all to buy your components and build it while I finish working on the code for it. The last thing to talk about with this is I had mentioned some kind of BMS battery management system and, and Jordan and a couple of other people gave me some great ideas, but it's still something that I know nothing about. So I'm going to hold off on that because I thought about it. And right now Nova has no BMS besides the voltage divider slash monitor battery monitor that I coded up or coded up, um, wired up and put in there, which isn't enough. Right? So anyway, we'll talk about that at another time. So let me go show you now what Jordan has been working on, which is really cool. And we're going to be releasing that to you all probably within a week. I just want to, there are a few more tweaks we need to make to some of the um, 3D printed parts for Nova that I have manually hot knifed little gouges out for various wiring and, and um, mounting. So we're going to do that, make sure all the parts are tight, they're all perfect, ready to go, and then we'll release this to you guys. So. It'll make downloading parts easier. It'll make assembling Nova much easier. All right, everybody. Let's check out what Jordan's been working on. Hey, guys. So here is what Jordan has been working on for quite a while and what he has shared with me. So I, this is a video that he made of it. So I'm just going to let this play in the background while I talk over it. So right off to the bat, <laughs> look at this great uh, 3D model he's doing of our new PCB board. So not only is this the 3D printed parts, but he is actually putting all of our actual hardware in there. Uh, so far we have found most parts, I should say he has found most parts, identical to what we're using. Now you'll notice too that some of these parts are still need updating, like I explained previously. For example, the top cover with that switch position there. <coughs> Excuse me. And the PS2 remote's going bye-bye, but look at this. It's got all the hardware in there. Even the servos, you, the colored labels match. And he even put our little graphic on the screen. Pretty cool. And LEDs. It, it's pretty wild what you can do at Fusion 360. If anybody's messing around with Tinkercad like I do, I suggest you stop right there and jump into Fusion. <laughs> but look at that. He put in our... Uh, Buck converter and everything. So he did notice a couple of glitches in the stand, which we fixed as well. Look at speaker, the PWM controller, even the cage around our other buck converter, the battery. Yeah, Jordan, if you're watching, and I'm pretty sure you are, you have done an amazing job, my friend. I, and I'm sure everybody else, probably everybody else will appreciate this more than me even. Because, guys, in, in this process, we did notice there was some fooch-ups with the framework in the front end with, with, with regard to alignment of mounting holes and pilot holes. So we have also fixed all of that. So for anybody moving forward or anybody who's cursing me because of misaligned holes, please comment on this video and either Jordan or I will, will point you in the right direction of what parts you need to swap out. Uh, otherwise, yeah, guys, it's looking really great. And, and keep in mind, this is not even rendered. He sent me a few rendered views, which I can show you right now, actually. So here is a quick little animation video spinning model that he made, which is pretty cool. I got to tell you guys, I mean, not only seeing you all building these in the photographs of Nova, but to see it like this, it, it's pretty awesome. I'm so glad I've pursued this project with you all and built a little so community let's take a going. look at his pictures here that he sent as well i mean look at that it's got glowing leds and everything <laughs> pretty impressive you did an amazing job here jordan that looks so real it's it's crazy and there's the unskinned version so you can see we've got a few more pieces of hardware to pop in there but yeah it's come along pretty cool All right, guys. So, yeah, hats off to Jordan. All right, so, yes, I will release. He, like I showed, he did a 3D exploded view of this where you'll be able to click on a part. It'll tell you what it is. It'll give you the latest STL file, and then, obviously, you can see exactly how it's all assembled. So it should solve any problems anybody's having, as well as future builders to have a much smoother build. 
So, yeah, like, share, and subscribe, everybody. Thanks for watching, and my next update should be a pretty, pretty general one with the remote done as far as the hardware goes at least and then a few updates as far as wiring goes and where the project's at and where i am at quite honestly i just shared this with um, jordan i have not even taken nova off the shelf for about three weeks at this point maybe even more than that yes i've been concentrated on the remote but um i do have to get back to nova get mine back live and working and walking and so I can work on code, because I know everybody's waiting for that, too. All right, everyone, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.